Amen, right? God is good. All right, before we get started, we're going to be continuing our study on spiritual growth and what the Bible says about spiritual growth. First, we're going to go to that verse of the day up there, Colossians 1.27. How's everybody doing with the walk through the Bible in a year? Okay, it's pretty good, huh? Through the Bible in a year? So you have to understand, the devil is not going to be happy with this congregation, okay? Teaching people to read their Bible when they're not here. And to understand and get that relationship with God. You are going to start to face a lot of adversity more than ever. He's going to try to stop you from doing this walk. Because truth will always win out. But we have to forcefully advance this kingdom. The Bible tells us that. So when truth is going out there and people are starting to grow spiritually. And starting to have an impact on darkness. The devil is not happy. He's going to try to get in any way he can. He's going to try to get into our relationships, <laughs> right? Uh, our walk, uh, he's, trying to, he's trying to bring out every little thing that hinders our walk. Our flesh, jealousy, hatred, bitterness, indifference, intolerance. He's going to say, boy, before I started reading this, things were better than they are now. So you have to understand how the enemy works, okay? He's going to, but listen, don't give up. Don't give up. Even if you miss a couple of days here and there, you can always go back. And if you don't want to go back, just keep moving forward. And just keep progressing, amen? amen. Because let me tell you something. You are going to get amazing results if you just let, let the Holy Spirit teach you to read in the Word of God, amen? amen? So jump on board with that podcast or get a Bible and start reading it with us. And you will enjoy the freedom in Christ, amen? amen. Just keep going because it's a blessing to me to do it. It's a lot of work. It's hard. But it's worth it. Nothing good comes easy in life. Mm -hmm. Nothing good or lasting. So just hang in there and keep going. Amen? Because mm -hmm. it's just as hard for me to go through it as it is for you. It's not natural for us to get in that Bible. It's always like a forceful thing. We have to always we try, fit them in or do this or put them last. To put them on top and to crucify our flesh is a process of sanctification that goes on through our whole life and our whole walk with him. Amen? Mm -hmm. The God tries to show us we're not far as long as we think we are when we try to try to put him first and realize that he's really not. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So just hang in there, okay? Everybody's on the same page here. This is a hospital for people that are healing and becoming whole again. So if you fall, just dust yourself off, get up, and just keep following Jesus. Amen? Amen. Okay. Let's go to everybody there. Colossians 1.27. Yes. Okay. I'm feeling a cold. I never felt where I don't feel good. It's like all of a sudden, like yesterday I felt great. Today I just woke up like I never went to sleep. It was brutal. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, the Holy Spirit says, I'll, don't worry, John, I'll take care of you. Just go. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to let the devil hinder me. Amen? We know his schemes. He affects our health. If you read the book of Job, what the devil did, how he affected Job physically, mm -hmm. through his relationships, and financially. So don't be surprised if these things start to happen to you as you advance. Because God is happy with you. As you just, just a desire for you wanting to understand him and get a better relationship with him, God is happy with you. Amen? Amen. He's not holding your missed days or the days you didn't pray against you. We hold it against ourselves more than God does. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay, let's just keep going. All right, look at verse 27. For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are uh, for you Gentiles too, which is us. And this is the secret. Hey, I'm going to tell you. You know how everybody wants to hear a little secret about somebody? Yeah. I've got a good secret to tell you that everybody needs to hear. Yeah. Christ lives in you. See it? This gives you assurance of sharing his glory. Now look at verse 28. So we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everybody with all the wisdom God has given us, which is spiritual growth. God gives us wisdom through his word, right? We want to present them to God perfect in their relationship to Christ. That's why I work and struggle so hard depending on Christ's power that works within me, amen? Listen, when God starts to work in us, you know, it's a fight. We know it is. But he always, he just, for some reason, even though we don't want to, we end up doing it anyway. So he's working in us every day. How many of us are not feeling their best today? How many of us are having problems? 
The closer you get to Jesus, the more the devil's trying to throw problems at us. So that's a good thing, believe it or not. See, in the Bible, these adversities are good. They help us develop what? Endurance. Help us to grow up. Can I get an amen? Amen. Right. It's going to work out for you. Don't you worry. God is in control. Amen. Just remember, nothing can happen in your life unless God allows it, and he does it for a reason. Amen. All right, so we're, <laughs> sometimes we can't find out what the reason is at that moment. We're so short-sighted. But he's, it's only for a season, and he's going to get you through. And if you handle it the right way, he's going to take you through it. Amen? Amen? All right, so just trust in the Lord. All right, so we're going to talk about this Christian life and this spiritual journey and this spiritual maturity the Bible talks about. What is it designed to do? I mean, why I come to church, I go to Bible study, I read my Bible, but what is what is the really importance of it? What what is the, let's go to um before we get into the thing, I want you to go to Philippians chapter one. Okay? What is this supposed to produce in us? As we do all this work, coming to church, Bible study. So just hang in there. There's a lot to learn about spiritual growth. Amen. And let me tell you something. God's pulling you through uh, adversities because he wants you to grow up. I'm saying, wow, I never got hit so hard. The more I do for God, the more hit I get. But we have to understand that the devil doesn't want us to go. He said, you back off, I'll back off. You stop, I'll stop. No. He was in me, he's greater than he was in the world. And I'm going to trust what God says and not how I feel. I'll take it. Amen. My thinking is off. That's why we have to renew our mind with God's word. Now look what it says in Philippians 1 verse 9. What is this supposed to produce? I pray, the Apostle Paul was praying to the Philippians, that your love will overflow more and more, and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. And he's going to tell us in verse 10, for I want you to understand what really matters in the Christian life. So that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. Now look at verse 11. May you always be filled with the fruit of our salvation. What is the fruit of our salvation? The righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. That's what's important. The righteous character that he's producing in our lives by Jesus Christ, or the fruit of righteousness through Jesus. For this will bring much glory and praise to God. Amen? Amen. That's what's important. And I want us also to go to Galatians chapter 6. I want to show us a couple things as we keep going on with this study. Okay. It says, verse 14, go there. Apostle Paul, talking to the Galatians. Is everybody there? Okay. Just hang in there. The devil is active in the church, okay? He's in, listen, the devil can work to anybody in their weaknesses and their believers. It's just the way it was. You have to fight through this, okay? Fight through this. Hang in there with me, all right? We're all soldiers in God's army. Mm -hmm. and, he's, and this is like boot camp. He's getting us ready for, <laughs> for bigger and better things. And the process of crucifying our flesh is not pretty, okay? Okay, now look what it says in verse 14. As for me, may I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross... My interest in this world has been crucified. See, that's what he's trying to do in our lives. He's trying to crucify our interest in what's going on in the world. And he's trying to give us an interest in what's going on in the world. This is what he's trying to do. By When you start getting miserable out there, you say, you know what, this, I don't want any of that anymore. I want to go to God. And he makes us miserable out there. All the things we used to want in life, we're not liking it anymore. It's not doing anything for us. And that's what he's doing in us. He's making us not want it anymore. He's making us lose the desire for the things of the world. And sometimes we still want them, but he, all of a sudden it's not doing what it used to do. It's not making me happy. It's not giving me any joy. It's taking me away from God, not bringing me to him. Now look what it says. My interest in the world, it doesn't matter. Listen to what it says now. 
whether they're being circumcised or not, what counts is whether we have been transformed into a new creation. That's what he's doing right now. He's transforming us into a new creation. Okay? May God's peace and mercy be upon all who live by this principle. They are the new people of God. You understand? He's getting rid of our flesh. He's creating new people out of, of us. And how he does it is through problems and adversity. When we don't want anything to do with that stuff anymore, we can't wait to go to church. That's what he's doing. <laughs> That's how he does it. You have to understand. Now look what it says. Look at verse 17. From my on, don't let any trouble with these things. For I bear on my body the scars that show I belong to Jesus. Okay? Dear brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen? So that's what he's trying to do in our lives, okay? So if you're having problems because you're reading the word of God more and getting closer to him, I just want you to know that that's normal. It's to be expected. And you can give yourself, you can, you can say to yourself, thank you, Jesus, because you're doing this in me and you're bringing me closer to you through this. It can make you, two ways things can happen. If you want to get out of the storm, you have to become better through it, not bitter. If you get bitter in it, right, you know what happens? He says, that's okay. Tomorrow he comes another storm, and another one, and another one, until you finally get better from it. And then when you do, when the time is right and you learn your lesson, done deal, and you move on to the next one. But he's never going to stop working on us. We have to understand that from jump, okay? We have to understand that, so... If you're going through adversities, it's because you're doing something right, not because you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't understand that at the time, you know? <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen? Just hang in there. Because I'm going through a lot of stuff. I'm saying, you know, the more I'm doing for the ministry and serving the Lord and reading my Bible, the more attacked I'm getting by people, work, ministry. It's like, I don't can't figure it out with my mind. Yeah. But that's what it does. Mm -hmm. It makes us want to give up. Listen, I never gave up when I was running with the devil. He possessed me and I ran with him faithfully. I didn't give up till I was almost dead. Well, that's what God's trying to do. He's trying to kill us so we give up and he can give us a new life. Amen? Amen. All right, so you understand that. Whatever course you're on, just stay with the word of God, okay? You can't miss. All right, let's continue, all right? We're going to talk about the gospel the Bible outlines a unique path to spiritual growth, okay? We're going to talk about spiritual maturity and spiritual growth and how we go about it through the Word of God, okay? Through the Word of God, through the church, and through the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Bible outlines a unique path to spiritual growth, okay? In fact, it's not so much a path as a person. Jesus Christ, Christianity, right, or spirituality as a whole is centered on a relationship with Him. That's what our whole walk is centered on. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. What he's trying to do is get rid of all the other things that kept us going and said, this is what I'm going to stand on, the foundation of rock, which is Jesus, the truth. And to get rid of all the other stuff, he has to do a couple of things in us. He has to cut away our sinful nature. And you know when you get caught, it doesn't feel good to get caught. It <laughs> doesn't. Especially your paper cut. See, here's the thing. You ever get a little paper cup? It hurts so much, and it's just a tiny oh, little thing, right? That's how God works. He just does this little tiny thing in us, and it just kills us. Mm -hmm. Those he's doing his little things, that irritants. The devil knows how to do his little irritants out of it. The big issues we handle well. Mm -hmm. If there's a tragedy or something's going on with someone's life, we're all there for each other. But it's the little things he picks on. Mm -hmm. The little things. Like, no, you didn't call me, you didn't do this. You know, all the little petty things that we bicker about. And it irritates us. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Why are you doing this and why are you doing that? Okay, the writers of the Bible make it clear that the gospel is the foundation for spiritual growth. But as with any structure, the foundation is not only what a starting point, okay, but also the primary support of the structure itself. So once the foundation is poured, then he starts what? The building. You go out there, you see a foundation board, right? You go back a couple of weeks later, you start to see the house being framed. It doesn't just stay a foundation. And that's what he's doing in our lives. Once we get him as the foundation and we get that right, he starts building us up. 
But he has to tear down the old way first. And he's starting new. That's the process of sanctification. Amen? So I'm trying to make you understand that in understandable words, okay? When individuals come to faith in Jesus Christ, they recognize their sinfulness. Boy, do we have all. Repent of our sins and trust Jesus as their Savior and Lord. This is how people participate in the good news, amen? Or the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel tells us clearly, it's laid out in 1 Corinthians. Let's go there, let's read it. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's get this foundation settled in good here. Our ministry wants to be built on a solid foundation. Okay? And guess what? Jesus is the rock. A lot of things stopping us from advancing in our spiritual walk is unbelief. We think it's other things hindering us, but it's unbelief on the power that we really possess from Jesus being our Savior. We can blame it on, you know, traffic like I do. But I can just get these people out of the way. I get to work, no problem. I love going to work on a holiday because there's nobody on the road. I just yeah, get right, right in. <laughs> but then I can't grow that way. Right? I grow and I just can't get there. And I'm a few minutes late. And I blah, 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 blah. And God finally says, tell me, John, just chill out, man. Get up 10 minutes early so this won't happen. Yeah, right. Duh. Don't tell people to get out of the way. You get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the problem. Yep. Well, this is what Christianity does. It tells us that we don't have to do anything. We have to remove everything. See, we have to remove our ways of thinking and renew our mind with God's ways. And this is the process that's painful. Because we think we got it all figured out. Mm. Even after we become Christians, we think we got the Word of God all figured out. Then he puts us through all these problems and says, I ain't got nothing figured out. I'm a mess. But I know the word of God, but I can't use one ounce of it in my life. And this is what happens in Christianity. They think of just reading the Bible. Look, the maturity isn't reading it. The, read, the, the maturity grows as we understand it, and then we move on to apply it. And if that never goes, then we never grow. And that's why we've got to read it over and over and over again as it takes on different meanings on our spiritual world. I'm reading the Bible now and I'm saying, wow, I didn't see that before. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand this before. Now I see it clearly. Like the Bible said, like, like I said, when people are small, the, a small tree needs just a little water. But as the tree grows, it needs more water. Christians think as they grow, they need less water of the Word of God when they need more. Mm -hmm. Oh, I read the Bible. I understand that scripture. I don't need to hear that again. No, you don't need to hear it. You need to do it. <laughs> I hear it clearly. I'm sick of hearing it. Yeah, no kidding. You're sick of hearing it. We'll start doing it. Then you won't have to hear it no more. <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen? Oh, we're so complaining. I love our church because we can be real here. How many of us fought with God today? And blamed on everything else. You <laughs> say, wait a minute, God's in my life, He's in control. He put this issue in my life. I'm not handling it right, and I'm mad at Him for it. Okay. <laughs> God is good. Now look at verse 1. Now let me remind you, everybody at 1 Corinthians 15? Yeah. Boy, I tell you, I didn't feel good. I'm starting to feel so much better now that God's word's starting to go out. Mm -hmm. This is what gives me power. The power is in the word of God. This is what all the power is. It's in the words. God spoke the world into existence by the mere words. That's how powerful they are. <coughs> the word of God is alive and powerful. People don't understand where the power comes from. It's the word. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is the good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place, or unless you never believed it in the first place. I passed, it on, to, I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scriptures said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day. <coughs> just as the scriptures said. He was seen by Peter or Cephas, and then by the twelve. 
After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all, all the other apostles. Now go to Romans chapter 10. There's another good, good, good verse. I can see people feeling better already. Mm -hmm. Understand that this is part of the trip. See, that's why you've got to keep getting reminded this is part of the trip. Your adversities and problems you have today are part of the trip. And even if it was because of your stupid or foolish decisions, he's still going to work it all out for good. There's going to be a lesson in it. Remember, if you're reading the New the, the, uh, the <coughs> Testament, remember how he said, Jacob is going to be, you're going to serve your young, your, the youngest are going to serve your younger brother. And how did God make that happen? By Jacob scheming to get first place to get his grip, but he had to steal it. God orchestrated all that so he could become first. Because that's how the prophecy was. You see, God had to do it that way. But look at the way he did it. Jacob stole his birthright, got the blessing from his father, and that's how he got it. Guess what? But God's the one who orchestrated it for that to happen. And what would have never happened, Esau would have been the firstborn, and he would have been the one that was going to be the leader. So God said, no, Jacob is going to be the one, and this is how I'm going to do it. Just like he did with Joseph, right? He sent Joseph into slavery. Joseph didn't realize until after that God did all that to save other people. He put yeah. me through all that to get... See how he did it, though? If you understand that, then you understand how he's doing it in you. He went to prison. Right? Jacob ended up getting beat up by Laban. Right? He had to get a taste of his own medicine. God orchestrated all that so he could become <coughs> Israel. Guess what? He's doing all this to you so you can become like Jesus. Get it? <laughs> You're going through all this so you can become like Jesus from it. Not like Satan. Mm. If you get bitter, you're going to become like Satan. Yeah. And that's where your testimony is going to be down here, which is half of Christianity today. Or you're going to be more like Jesus that understands that that's part of the crucifixion and that was part of his plan for my life. Nobody's taught that. Mm -hmm. This is how he does it. You know, this is how he do it. This is how he does it. <laughs> this is how he does it. <laughs> yeah, I did it because I hear it. Amen. <laughs> Why? I can't use it? Why not? I can use it for good. <laughs> now you got your all laughing. You all had my lemon faces a little while ago. Why are you all laughing? You did. I seen them. <laughs> a bunch of Christians coming to church. <laughs> no kidding. We're in hell. We're in hell. Of course you're gonna have a bad day down here if you want. Well you're gonna have a joy if you understand this ain't my home. I'm getting out of here soon. Amen. 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 Think of the things above, not the things that are here. The problem is we're thinking of things here and not the things above. Amen. That's what Christian growth's all about. Thinking about the things above, not the things here. Amen. <sighs> all right. <laughs> This is all I'm going to get. And all I'm going to do it. God gave me this, these, these, the way this Italian went, and this is the way it goes. <laughs> and I'm not going to change that. That's just the way it is. Like it or not. <laughs> God happens to use me as the vessel. You don't like it, take it up with him. <laughs> but let me tell you something. God called me to do it, right? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every right. tongue that rises in me, judgment thou shalt condemn. But this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. The right, God's got my back. So whatever you come up against me, go for it. I don't care. Amen. God's got my back. Amen. <laughs> he's the one that called me to do it, so I do it. And he's the one who I'm accountable to. <sighs> All right, Romans 10, verse 8. I'm just getting warmed up now. Jeremiah's preaching. Jeremiah's preaching too, see? Jeremiah was only 17 when he got called as a prophet. So just imagine, if you got called when you were young, you better thank God because he saved you a lot of problems. To get you out of this life. Let me tell you, I had to go through a lot of hardship before I found him. If you're young and he called you young, thank him. Yeah. Some people think they robbed me of my life. No, he saved you. Yeah. He saved you from all the problems that go on in life. The younger, the better. The younger you can get truth from the word of God, the better off you'll be. Jeremiah, he's got a jump stop. Well, I wish I was him. Yeah. He's getting the word of God from jump the truth. Mm -hmm. He's got an awesome shot. Mm -hmm. I got led down the wrong way. Yeah. But that, God had put me there to get me here. That's just the way it is. Yeah. 
But he, he made me suffer so someone else don't have to. Amen. Amen. That's why you're suffering. So someone else don't have to. Look what it says in Romans 10 verse 8. In fact it says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. So if all I have to read is the New Testament, why is that in there? Because he's quoting Deuteronomy 30, chapter, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 12 to 14. That's what he's using. And, the message is, is, and, and that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. And he's quoting Isaiah 28, verse 16. So if, if the Old Testament wasn't for us, then he wouldn't be in the New Testament. Genesis to Revelation is for every believer. And every believer that sits in church should read the Bible from cover to cover. And if anybody's teaching or they don't have to, then they're trying to become king and not Jesus. Yes, yes. Tell you right now, yep. Yep. the Bible is written for each and every believer to read through. Amen. It should be a requirement for every Christian to read through the Bible. That's why we prevent. That's why we provide that. Amen. If anybody tells me you don't have to read your Bible, <coughs> they're from the devil. Mm -hmm. Tell you right now, that Bible should be getting open every day to teach you. That's the Holy Spirit telling you truth, and that's your personal relationship with Him. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you. I gotta make that clear. Don't listen to anybody that tells you you don't have to read the Bible. Look at verse 12. Jew and Gentile are in the same respect. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And who's he quoting there? He's quoting Joel chapter 2 verse 32. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless somebody tells them? Mm -hmm. Listen, you get saved so you can tell someone else about Jesus. We're all called to be teachers of the spread of the good news. Look what it says. And how, listen what it says. How can they hear him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? Now look what it says. That is why the scriptures say, How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. And where are they getting that from? Isaiah chapter 52, verses 7. Amen? So, if the Old Testament isn't, doesn't, isn't for us, then why do they put it in the New Testament if that is for us? Mm -hmm. It's for us too. It's for an example for us. Read 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians 10. It's in there, as they did, they died by snake, but don't follow their example. It's for our example, so we don't fall into the traps they fell into. The gospel is the good news that through Christ, the power of God's kingdom has entered history to renew the whole world. When we believe and rely on Jesus' work rather than ours, for our relationship to God, that kingdom power comes upon us, right, and begins to work through us. For many Christians, the gospel has functioned primarily as an entry right into Christianity. It is the prayer we pray to begin our relationship with Jesus the diving board off which we jump into the pool of Christianity, according to the Bible, true spiritual growth flows from a relationship with Jesus Christ. But in reality, listen up now, in reality, the gospel is not only important for the beginning of one's spiritual journey, but throughout all of the Christian's life. Spiritual growth finds its genesis and continuation in the gospel of Jesus Christ and our salvation and eternal security through faith in Him. That is what starts off Christian walk. That's only the beginning, though. That's the milk. That's the milk of God's Word, His grace and His love. That's the milk. We feed off the milk till we grow enough to start eating the meat of the Word. We're denying yourself for the benefit of others. How many times are you going to hear that? How much, how much milk do you need? Churches are full of the milk of the word, the milk of the word, grace, love, all one condition, good grace, 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 grace. Yeah, no kidding. I need God's grace. We know that, but what do I do with it? Can I use it to help me grow? Absolutely. That's what it's there for. Where sin abounded, grace much more abounded. Grace is the power to overcome the sin nature. We need that every day. How many fail today? 
Thank God for his grace, but my direction wants to go towards him. It's not that I'm using it to keep doing my own will. It's so I can start to crucify myself to start doing his will. I need all the grace I can get for that to happen because I'm, I'm stubborn. I love my will. I want to mix my will with his. That's right. I want to mix all this in heaven too. And this is what if God says, no, that's not going to happen. Sorry. That's going to go. And you don't like the way I'm going to take it, but it's the way I've got to do it. Sorry. <laughs> the good news of Jesus is information that issues an invitation to trust and believe all of life. Throughout the New Testament, okay, the Apostle Paul regularly describes the life as a Christian as in Christ. To emphasize the union of a believer, a believer enjoys with Jesus. Out of this union or relationship flows dynamic spiritual growth, which is transformation. See, the unconditional relationship, knowing that we're going to heaven, is what produces the transformation in us to keep going forward. Get it? Knowing for certain that heaven will be our home. I know for a fact that heaven is my home, no matter how much I fail down here. But the thing of it is, I want some of that now. And the only way I'm going to get that is if I yield to him and start doing things his way and using the Bible as the owner's manual. Or else I'm going to keep messing things up down here as I keep doing. I'm getting better, though. As I, as I finally say to myself, you know, John, that way does not work. All it does is produce frustration, John. Mm -hmm. Finally, I give it to him. Say, All right, I'm just trusting God to do this because I can't fix this. I can't fix him. I can't fix that. I can't change this, and I can't change that. <laughs> Once you really come to that realization, you say, now I can breathe. I'm giving it to you, Lord. <laughs> Not without a fight, though. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one that goes through this, no. or is everybody? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, no. take the church face off, all right? I don't buy it. Thank you. <laughs> you can read the Bible 3,000 times and be worse than an unbeliever. As a matter of fact, you are worse than an unbeliever, because if you don't use any of that enlightenment to change, mm -hmm. guess what? You're more accountable. You knew better. Why are you doing it still? Mm -hmm. I gave you the power not to. You're more accountable than they are. You think that's a gr the grace is to get away with that? No. No, we're going to get chastened big time. But we're going to have to make the comfort. I'm going to have to answer for that abuse of God's grace in the human mind. Mm -hmm. Believe me. Mm -hmm. Abusing that grace to keep on sinning. Right. It's the worst. Yeah. You think God saved us so we could keep sinning? We didn't need a Savior for that. Mm -hmm. We need a Savior to stop. <laughs> That's the work of the Holy Spirit when he comes into our lives, right? Galatians 5.22. Let's just see what, let's see what the, the Holy Spirit produces. We already know what we produce. This is what we're growing to get to. Imagine you got up this morning, right? You got a phone call. You know, we're making some changes in our, our shop, and uh, we just can't use you anymore. And you've been reading the Bible, coming to church faithfully. Praying all day long. Spiritual as they come. Which, that means you should be ready to handle that. That's why God prepared you for something like that to happen. And you can just say, you know what, God's got something better for me. Amen. Because don't think that you can't be replaced. The minute you think you can't be replaced wherever you work, right. is when they're already looking for somebody else. Trust me. Everybody can be replaced. Everybody. So don't think you're smarter than everybody else. Mm. Just stay humble and God will take care of you. Because then when that day comes, you know what will happen? You'll get mad at God. Say, God, why'd you let this happen? I've been going to church, going to Bible study, being religious as they come. How come, I, how come you're taking my job from me now? Mm. I'm not going to church no more. I'm not <laughs> praying. And I ain't reading my Bible. See what happens? Thinking the wrong way. Saying, said, you know what? God prepared me to handle this. Now I can handle it. I can sit down with my family, let them know that, look, even though this is happening, I know it's going to be hard, but God allowed it, and guess what? He's going to get us something better if we just trust in him. Mm -hmm. That's what he's preparing us to handle. Yeah. Can I get an amen for yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. And if you can't handle that, that's okay. God's going to keep doing some work in you. Don't worry. 
He doesn't give us more than we can handle, or we don't we think he does. Mm. Believe me, the human body can handle a lot. Because I know when I was running with the devil, I don't even know how I'm still breathing. Never mind. Just doing some adversities with God. We can handle it, trust me. We're pretty versatile. Now look what it says in verse 5, chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 22. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love. 1 Corinthians 13, love. Joy. Peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no war against these things. And I already went over what they all do. So you want to go back? Just keep me. So look, and is this coming? Is, am I being more like this? That's how you know if the Spirit's con controlling you or not. It doesn't mean that you don't have it. That means you have it. You're just not using it. And letting that happen, he's trying to use it. He's trying to create all these problems in you so you tap out and end up having peace no matter what's going on in your life. Yeah. He's grooming you. People just do not understand God. They try to figure him out intellectually, and it will never happen. He does everything against human thinking. Everything. Can I get an amen for that? Mm -hmm. It's so much easier to say, all right, God, I said I trusted you. How come I don't? I I'm lying to myself. I say I trust you, but I'm trying to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell him a thing to do. I'm going to defend myself. Okay. Where does that get you when you try to defend yourself? Mm -hmm. Nowhere. Doubtless. <laughs> i got to stand up for what's right. <clears throat> How do you know what's right? How do you know your standard of right is and wrong is? The only way you're going to get that knowledge is through God's word, what's right and wrong, through discernment. And that takes time. You don't get that from any other way but growing with the Lord. <coughs> okay. However, there's also a progressive sense of holiness, okay, uh, that is aim, the aim of sanctification or spiritual growth. Once we believe in Jesus, all them attributes are given to us. We have the very heart of God. The problem is we still got an old nasty heart, and the transplant for it to take effect, we have to get the you know anti-rejection medicine, which is the Bible, so the new heart can function. Now, unfortunately, the old heart is still functioning in us, and we know that by our bitterness, our jealousy, our anger, and our resentment. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Now, when these things start to get produced, when you want to be angry, instead of angry, you have joy, instead of. Um, Scrambled eggs, you have peace. <laughs> right? This is, this, is, this is what he's trying to produce in you, though, through all the stuff going on in your life. And you're just not letting him. That's the problem. We get in the way of him doing it. We can get the Bible, the 11-day uh, journey took them 40 years. Mm -hmm. See? How long do you want it to take you yeah. to get there? It's all up to you. I'm like, you know what? I can learn from their mistakes. You know what wisdom is? Learning from someone else's mistakes. That's really wisdom. Instead of having to make them yourself. Learning from someone else's problems and mistakes. But no, I get it. I'm different. I, I can handle it, right? And then we got to go through it. And then get what? Slapped on the side of the head again. <laughs> now, I'm human. The Bible says we're all made up of the same stuff. So why would it be any different for anybody else? That's stubborn, ain't we? We're good in here, but we're learning about God. Well, sometimes we're not. We're not even good in here. <laughs> but when we get out there, the real you shows up. And believe me, God sees that. He knows that. He loves us. That's what his grace is for. But don't think you're getting away with it. Everybody thinks they get away with sin. No. Sin hurts us and other people. You don't get away with it. It's what causes death. Your sin nature is what kills you. Everybody thinks because, well, wow, wow, I'm not getting punished for that sin. Oh, good. I can keep going with it. Go ahead. God, that's what God's grace is for. Remember, you know when you get a take out a loan, you get what they call the grace period, right? They give you, what, like 15 days of the grace period? And then what, what after that comes? A penalty. The same thing with God. He gives us all the room to grow and make changes. But then if we don't, then he starts turning it up. And then we get chasing for it. Instead of saying, you know what? Thank God for giving me a pass. I'm going to repent right now while I can. Please, I don't want to get the rod. Just let me re get lead, led by the eye. 
Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, I, go to, I went to that woodshed a long time. I'm still going. It's like, oh, John, you dummy. <laughs> why do you let God keep sending? Why do you keep going to the woodshed when I don't want you to? Mm -hmm. Because I want my will. That's why. Okay. However, as you look, when Paul was open to many of his letters to ancient churches, you see that the early Christians, he was calling them saints, right? He was calling them saints in the, old, in the New Testament, right? As you read these letters, though, however, you see that these early Christians don't seem so saintly. As a matter of fact, the Corinthians were, what, getting drunk in church? They were selling each other stuff. They were taking each other to court. They were doing the most ungodly things that they can do. And just imagine, 2,000 years later, churches used that as an excuse to keep doing it instead of growing and learning from that. Oh, we're just like the true Corinthians. Really? That's shameful. Mm -hmm. 2,000 years later, you're still doing that. You haven't learned yet. They only took 40 years. We're taking 2,000. <laughs> and we still ain't got it. <laughs> they are prone to weakness, envy, and strife. They are deeply flawed and broken, just like everyone else, right? Paul continues to remind these Christians they are called to be holy people. But they continue to struggle to live into God's purpose for them because of the what? Persuasive and insidious influence of sin. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's, that, that it's sin that keeps us from doing his will. Mm -hmm. if, sin, if, if sin looked bad, we would never sin if it made us bad. We simply get something out of sin. That's why we do it. That's why he's trying to make us hate our sins. That's why he's... Look... When you sin, he's causing more problems, so now you stop sinning. That's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's bringing an awareness to your sin now. Well, you didn't weren't aware of it before you kept doing it. By default. Okay. Are you with me so far here? Mm -hmm. Okay. In light of this, the work of the Holy Spirit for God in spiritual growth can be described in two ways. First, the Holy Spirit convicts Christians of their sin, right? And leads them to avoid evil in all forms. Second, the Holy Spirit compels Christians to pursue holiness and virtue. So we're still, even though we're fighting with it, we're still pursuing doing the right thing. We're pursuing righteousness as we walk with him. You know what I'm saying? I'm still wanting, even though I might be doing wrong, I want to do right. I'm still pursuing the right path. Amen? Amen. The power for that sanctification comes from the Holy Spirit. According to the Bible, the believer's growth will cause them to become more and more like Christ until Jesus himself returns to make all things new. Now we're going to get into prayer and Bible reading, okay? This is the good part. This is why we do the walk through the Bible in a year. To your benefit. Spiritual growth occurs as a result of God's guidance in the believer's gospel-driven efforts. Okay? For this reason... Christians turn to Scripture to discern patterns that promote maturing in their faith. The Bible directs Christians in the pursuit of spiritual transformation. For individual practice, the most important thing one can do are read Scripture daily and pray. Okay? Combining the two, one might find it helpful to read the Bible prayerfully. Think about this now. You know when you read the Bible, sometimes you just can't get it. I don't know. Everything's on your mind. You read it, and it's just like empty. Mm -hmm. God called me to do this. I said, you know, John, stop praying first. To give me an understanding of your word so I can put all other things aside and get the message that you're trying to tell me. Because other than that, there's things of the world start taking place. You're reading and listening to it, but it's not getting in. Mm -hmm. Because other things, the cares of the world are still in there. Mm -hmm. and, and then I can say, what did you read today? I can't remember none. <laughs> yeah. Because that's why we have to what? That's why it's not natural for us to do it. Have you noticed it's not natural? Mm -hmm. You wish it was natural, ain't it? First thing when you jumped up, <laughs> up in the Bible. I can't wait. Come on, Jesus, talk to me. No. We gotta like. Uh, uh, oh, wait a minute, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> wait a minute, I gotta have my cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, I gotta stop my car so it gets warm. <laughs> Um, wait a minute, I gotta call somebody. Oh, oh, by that time it's 11 o'clock at night, right? Three words come on. <laughs> oh, but I put Jesus 
first. <laughs> this is the sanctification process I'm talking about. Tell, tell me all of us, if the first thing you jump up and say, I can't get up without the Bible. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> Thank you for being real. Because I can't even do that. I, that's what I'm working towards. I'm working towards nothing for God first. I'm saying, God, you're so stupid. You always put other things in front of him like nonsense. And God says, that's why. Right. Imagine God shaking his head with us. I know. <laughs> they just don't get it. All they want to do is have a relation with them and then put me first and everything else will fall into place and they just put me last and still think everything's going to fall into place. <laughs> no, instead of everything falls apart. Yeah. Simple, but so hard. Mm -hmm. I got an email for that? Amen. Hey, we have a real church here. Isn't it That's nice right. that we have this real church that say that you know, you know, we ain't all saints. Like some people are pray for two hours a day. Hey, wow, two hours a day. <laughs> I can't even think for two hours a day. <laughs> People become holier than thou in church, and it turns the unbeliever world off to no extent. You're saying you're full of it. Joe Christian, I know the Bible. I know this. You should read this, and you should read that. And then you can't live one iota of it, and then you're trying to tell people how to do it. So he says, get rid of the log in your eye, then you can see clearly enough to get rid of the speck in your friends. You know, one thing that, I'm going to give you some godly advice. Do not give your opinion to someone unless somebody's asking for it. Amen. Amen. Everybody tries to correct everybody without them asking for correction. Amen. Look, look in the mirror. You've got enough correction to do on yourself. Never mind. So <laughs> if you're looking to correct me, it's because you don't want to correct you. Can I get an amen, amen for that? Amen. Thank you. God says, mind your business, work with your hands, and let the Holy Spirit correct them. And don't, don't worry, they'll, they'll correct it. The Holy Spirit works in us. That little, that works better than anything else for me. As a matter of fact, when you tell me I shouldn't do something, when you make a law, then I do it more. Yeah. We're just rebellious in nature. Okay. <laughs> Am I getting through here? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. This is real stuff, right? This is what we come to church for, some real right. stuff. Right. <laughs> All right. As I begin to read the Holy Scriptures, laying everything else aside, trying to, and praying if need be, on every line of every word, this gives me spiritual food and drink I need, indeed, for my hungry and thirsty soul. See, I'm thinking I need to get a drink of water, do this, do that, to satisfy what's in me, but really I have a soul thirst. It's not getting satisfied with any of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going for the Bible first to fill that. Then everything else is already full. I don't need it. Mm -hmm. I'm working on it. So are you. I daily receive fresh life, light, and power from above. I found it to be the key for my spiritual growth. To pray before I start reading the Bible. To ask God to guide me in this prayer. Because right then and there, I already know that I can't do it with my own power. Mm -hmm. It's not in my nature to want to read that Bible. I need my new nature to do it, and the only way I'm going to get my new nature is if I ask God to let me use it. Yeah. I have to summon him first. Yeah. He doesn't just come in. You have to invite him in. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, why didn't I think of that before? I'm not inviting him in. Right. I'm starting to do that. I'm saying, wow. Now I'm starting to see things in the Old Testament that i never seen before. So wow, it's taking out a new life for me. I'm like, actually... Looking forward to it more than, you know, like, uh, oh, no, I didn't read my Bible. Oh, here we go, 11 o'clock, i got to read this. Oh, no, I'm looking forward to it now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. It might be getting religious and it's just a bunch of nonsense. Mm -hmm. Get nothing out of it. Yeah. Okay? Let's go to Deuteronomy 4. And this will be the last one. we got more to say. We ain't done yet. Oh, 
Now, before I read this, I'm gonna, once, when we start to get self-reliant again, I just want you to hear me here now. Don't let me lose you. Once we get self-reliant again, God has to break us again, okay? So we'll come back to him again. That's what he, he doesn't want to do it that way, but some of us are very stubborn and prideful, so he has to do it that way. See, we start to get self-reliant when we used to pray to get in the Word, and then all of a sudden we're not praying and we're still getting in the Word, we're starting to become self-reliant again. And then he has to cause a problem for us to start relying on him again. Because we're just stubborn and prideful. How many of you in here have got pride issues? Don't even tell me that, because just talking to a few of you, I already know you do. <laughs> All of us do. Look what it says, verse 29 of Deuteronomy. It says, but from there, when you get into that broken state again, you will search again for the Lord your God, because he's the one that put that problem there. And if you search for him with your whole heart and soul, you'll find him. You see, he knows your heart. He knows if you want him back in your life again. You see, you can get indifferent, and you can get cocky, and thinking all this, and you start being it on your own. He knows you really don't want him in there. You're doing it on your own, and self-reliant, trying to become smarter. And instead of becoming soft, you become rigid and hard and stone cold. And Jesus said, no, I died to give you a soft, fresh, soft heart. I want you to grow into my image where I'm accepting of myself and soft and gentle and kind. All the fruits of the Spirit. Not lemon juice and anger and bitterness and, and degrading each other. Amen. And if you're still doing that, we know we still need to grow and we've got a long way to go. Mm -hmm. If you're tearing somebody else down, God's going to have to tear you down. Yeah. Sorry. Just remember, next time you open your mouth and start tearing somebody down, the woodshed is coming. Mm -hmm. You are going to get a taste of it worse than you're giving it. So just remember that. Whenever you, re you reap what you sow, later than you sow and more than you sow. Amen? All right, so we're going to have to stop there. Thank you for letting me share that with you. So hang in there, soldiers, and understand God's working, and he loves you. Brittany's going to come up and sing, and we're going to close.